niggas got me hot. Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. For Christmas, the wife bought me a nifty little ammo can, um, or an ammo box, whatever you want to call it, um, full of goodies like uh, laser etched beer glasses and a bottle opener and some beef jerky and stuff. Oh, and speaking of beef jerky, I'll also be uh, eating some of the beef jerky that I got from Renoa Super Genius. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to his channel, you should check it out. And if you are subscribed, you should become a Patreon. He might send you jerky too. Um, so I don't, I've got plenty of other ammo cans uh, lying around. Um, but after I, cons after I pulled all the gifts out of this, I thought it was a shame just to throw this away. I mean, um, I mean, it's technically a fake ammo can if something this sturdy and made of metal can be fake. Uh, but it's made in China and it's, it, was, it never was intended to have, ha ha hold ammo or at least, um, it was never destined to hold ammo since it was purchased this way. I mean, for example, here's a couple other ammo cans that I've got, but this one's um, a British one that I acquired at some point in my life. And this one holds all my uh, tool um, tools for uh, cleaning my guns. And then here is what this one is supposed to be. This is, you know, the new slash fake one from China. And this is like a legit, um, 7.62 ammo can, uh, and this one I think holds piece parts for magazines. Oh, they're stiff. Whoa, it's like a, it's like a jack of the box or like a, one of those novelty things with like a snake's pile out on these. Anyways, that is a real ammo can, and it's useful. I mean, it's, it's holding a seal and it's serving a purpose right now. So I'm not going to go hacking up on this one. But like I said, what a shame that this is not going to get used. And it's um, because it's kind of like a Chinese knockoff. Oh man, you guys are going to be able to hear me with all the clinking and clinking. Apologies. Uh, so since it's a, essentially a, a, a knockoff of, of an ammo can, um, the manufacturers of it don't have to stick to mil specs. And so the the seal here doesn't work perfectly. And actually when I got mine, this was all bent up and it there was no way it would make a seal because this metal piece was bent into it. Um, and that caused these hinges to get all tweaked. There's some other things that the the manufacturers from uh, man crates do, uh, I'm guessing they must do because uh, these ammo cans in my entire military career, once you got this up, you had to give it a good, you know, a, a good yank on it to get it to, to clear uh, these detents here on the side of the can. And uh, they clear, have clearly bent these out on purpose to make that first opening really easy. Like nobody wants to get a gift and then they can't get it open. It's some kind of like practical joke kind of a thing. Um, or they go wrenching it and they pop a knuckle on something. Uh, but to help them out, they, obviously one of the steps in the man crate's uh, operation is to bend these out and make it a little bit easier to get this thing open. I'm not mad about that, that's totally fine. I'd probably do, probably do the same thing if I um, had one of these like get a gift a month services or like something something subscriptions that they do. As you've probably deduced from the title, this is yet another Bluetooth ammo can boombox type um, build and I started to think what can I do with this ammo can and in the garage out here I've got almost all the little bits and bobs that I would need to build uh, one of these ruggedized uh, Bluetooth um, speakers and and I've actually been experimenting with Bluetooth speakers before and trying to make different unique enclosures and stuff and uh, that's for another video uh, but today we'll be modifying and, and tweaking the ammo can. Things like speakers and little trims for those. I've got a number of those laying around the house. Uh, I've got things to power it, like uh, a uh, good amount of 18650s that I've processed and haven't had a project for yet. Gloves from here on out. Uh, reason being, the cells that I've got are still have all these little tabs on there. And when I say tabs, uh, you should think razor blade. <laughs> because that is what these things are. And uh, mostly because I, I got tired of processing the, like I didn't know what their final um, uh, home was gonna be. Uh, if I knew that, I might have ripped off all these tabs, but I don't, and so I don't wanna spend the time 
uh, meaning the man hours, to rip off all these tabs of like thousands of these cells that I've got if later I want to use them. As an example, if I want to put them into my own, if I want to build a quick little pack, instead of coming in and heating up these um, cells to solder onto, I can just utilize the, t the welded from the factory tabs that they've already got and either weld them again with like a spot welder, which I've not built, or uh, built or bought, and, or to solder. But if, I, if I'm just soldering these tabs and they're way out here and they don't have enough um, uh, time or material to get that heat into the cell, it saves the cell from that. And so this this will be really beneficial. And so um, it, at least as a, as a stopgap solution for powering this little box, I'm just gonna use some 18, 18650 cells because that's what I've got lying around. Um, so the only, the only other piece that I was missing here in uh, in the garage uh, was a little Bluetooth module. I guess I mean, I've got other Bluetooth modules, but um, something that's got little tabs and some buttons and um, can actually drive a decent speaker. This little thing and other ones like it that I've got lying around can only drive a tiny little speaker that it has built in, uh, but definitely wouldn't be able to keep up with a decent little uh, subwoofer like this. This is basically my missing piece. So. It's going to be batteries plugged into this, this plugged into a speaker, and Bob's your uncle, you're pretty much done. Uh, and then also, of course, we'll be drilling some holes in the ammo can uh, to make a large enough circle to accommodate such a big speaker. Now they make hole saws that are, are similar diameter to this, uh, but they're like 40 bucks, and I don't even know if I'm gonna like the thing I finally built. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the tried and true method of drilling a number of uh, holes around the circumference and then connecting those holes with a jigsaw. Wish me luck. Now, honestly, I don't care if this thing gets scratched up. You kind of want it to get scratched up, but what I don't want is it to get scratched up by the uh, by the saw moving around on the face of it, get these like circular things. They're just not natural battle scars. There we go, much better. Well, there we go. Now let's uh, put some components in this thing. And they'd be so close together you wouldn't get a stereo type effect anyhow. Uh, what I've done is sort of rocked it with the mono. And the way I'm achieving mono is by pulling the positive from the left channel and the negative from the right channel. And most uh, amps, the, the way that they're designed is that ends up being a mix of both at uh, double the wattage. I almost forgot. That's how they get you. And if I could give you any uh, advice for soldering, it would be to not grab the hot end. Okay to grab. Not okay to grab. And I really liked the idea of the other modules sort of um, magnetically connecting to the inside of the ammo can. I thought that was kind of pretty pretty simple. Um, of course, I mean, if you drop the thing, it's gonna go sliding or moving around in there, but I think for the way I'm gonna use it around the house and the garage, it should be fine. And so I'm gonna try and replicate that with this module so that it stays sort of planted at the bottom and see how it goes. Maybe later I'll 3D print uh, something like these and then include a place to hold a magnet captive. Throw a couple magnets in here. Let's see if that's that's gonna hold. Oh yeah. I have to be careful that this doesn't come over here and short something out, the metal for this. So I'm gonna try and tuck it back over by the speaker. Uh, but I also don't want it to be rattling around. I will fix it with duct tape. A 
couple things to keep in mind. Uh, one, when we put the lid back on, we will lose quite a bit of the wireless conductivity, right? Uh, so we'll probably do a future installment of this where I drill holes. You can watch me drill holes and put things through those holes, uh, which would be the antenna, this switch, and maybe some of the uh, buttons that are more often used buttons like volume up, volume down, and pause. Yeah, let's see what it sounds like. I can tell there's a slight hiss, and I think that has to do with that converter, the uh, or the booster. I'm boosting up from uh, just four volts, which is what those lithium ions are. Now, the other thing you might notice uh, in this revision of the of the speaker is that I don't have a charging circuit built in. I'm later gonna grab one of my TP4056s, uh, I think uh, they're called, and they've got a little micro USB, uh, which I think is sort of comical, this massive thing, and then a tiny little micro USB for charging, but I can plug it in and let it trickle charge that massive pack that's in there. Uh, and I like that because it's, it's low voltage, at least at the, at the pack level, and so I don't have like a battery management system or anything like that, and it, that'll have over voltage protection and uh, that type of stuff. So let's play some copyright free, royalty free music on this thing and see how she does. Oh yeah, well, take it from me, it has the ability to get obnoxiously loud, if you prefer. Uh, not bad. Yeah, there's definitely a slight little um, uh, hiss coming through here, but I, I tested it earlier with just a uh, switch mode power supply and also a direct uh, a larger battery pack uh, to that uh, little Bluetooth module. Uh, which I'll put the link in the description. I can't remember the, the model number for it right now. Um, but And it, I didn't notice a hiss then. So I think it's just something about it boosting 4 volts up to 20 volts. Uh, maybe I'll try it 4 to 8 and see if that gets rid of some of that hiss. Who knows? Uh, I was also pleased that, uh, and, and no dig against uh, the man crates guys. They make a perfectly fine product. And I really enjoyed the... Actually, let me get one of those. Yeah, here you go. So... This is what they came with. Very nice. I keep a couple in the fridge, or freezer I should say, uh, so they're nice and frosty. Awesome, they're like laser etched, so very cool. Anyways, what I, was, what I was saying was that I was glad to have been able to cut out the part that says man crates, otherwise I was going to have to paint over that, um, so that turned out really well. So if you got a kick out of this and you'd like to see more, uh, press the like button. People seem to enjoy doing that, uh, and subscribe so that the next time I drill a hole through something and put electronics in it, you will be able to see it. Thanks.